Okay, so hello to anybody that had joined us at the immediate time of going on live here. This is the uh, the Gold Spot Pens uh, Pen Showcase. We are just kind of testing things out here today, and we have a uh, you know this, we're just in a basic conference room of ours right now, and I have our selection of pens that we're going to be taking a look at today, and inks and whatnot. Uh, this is the first time we're trying out uh, Facebook Live here, so kind of bear with us to, you know, work out the kinks and just uh, be able to you know, feel out the system and see what's going on here. But uh, you know, we got a good setup going on here. We have a little tripod for my uh, for my iPhone, and of course the selection of items here. All right, so. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we will talk about the inks that you see in front of us here. So St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow, is March 17th. So what we did was looked around and said, hey, you know, what inks do we have that are very St. Patrick's inspired or St. Patrick-y? And uh, let's do them in a weekly dip. Let's, let's offer them at a, at a discounted uh, price and uh, feature them up on the website. So we'll uh, take a look here. We have uh, Mont Blanc Irish Green, which I mean, how better, uh, what better of an ink to go with for St. Patrick's Day than Mont Blanc Irish Green? It's a, I, we did a little writing sample here. Well, it's more of like an ink splotch. So you could take a look. It's got a nice, Fairly even colored green, more like an evergreen with a little bit of like a bluish sort of hint to it. And we've also got Pelican 4001 Brilliant Green, which is actually a discontinued color now. It was replaced with Dunkel Grün. And uh, so Brilliant Green is a, is also a nice brightish you know, sort of, uh, it's, it's like a it's, a, it's a green with a little bit of like a bluish tint to it. It's got a little bit of that uh, sheen towards the edges, if you could see that, like especially where the ink is particularly concentrated on. It's a really nice looking green. I like this one. So, and then also we have Noodler's Forest Green, which we still have the bottles of the, um, the, the plastic container versions of it. Okay, so forest green is a little bit darker. Um, you know, it's got it's got a little bit of a uh, you know of, a, of like a, of a richer quality to it than the other colors. And then you have Kelly Green, which is from Diamine, and Kelly Green's got a nice light uh, greenish, a little tinge of yellow to it. Very bright and lively, lower saturation, so you would be able to see some higher degree of shading in that uh, in that color. And like I said, all four colors are available on the website currently on the weekly dip page. So if you check out goldspot.com and you go under specials and you go to weekly dip, uh, you will find these four inks up for sale currently. And it will be only active for this week. And uh, check them out. Uh, another ink to take a look at was uh, Aurora came out with Blue Black, and this may not be that exciting to some people, but Blue Black, uh, Aurora has only made two colors in its entire history of making inks, and uh, they were blue and black. And the tremendous news about this is that this is Blue Black. So it is not blue, nor is black, it is right between. Um, it, you know, all kidding aside, uh, Aurora makes a fantastic ink that is just outstanding to use in pens. I like to use Aurora uh, inks in testing pens and into uh, when I'm cleaning or adjusting pens. It's a really great behaving ink that doesn't uh, clog, uh, doesn't uh, have any issues with dryness or, or stopping up your feed. It's just very well uh, behaved and well lubricated for a, you know optimal fountain pen use. Uh, so I did, I did load our next item to take a look at, which is our Sailor 1911. And the Sailor 1911 is in the Fresca Blue. I'm just allowing the camera to focus in on that. So the Fresca Blue 
is a is essentially like a, a Pantone uh, color resin. So they picked a really beautiful uh, robin's egg blue, uh, turquoisey sort of blue, and matched it with uh, with some silver trims here and a rhodium plated gold nib, which is fantastic. And uh, this is in the 1911 standard size. And I did load this up. This uses cartridge or converter. I apologize about the band-aid in the photo there. I had a little mishap earlier today. And uh, so this is a, uh, this is the Sailor standard converter, filled it up with Aurora Black. It also uses the Sailor cartridges. And this is the music nib. So this is the Sailor music nib, which is uh, for the 1911S model is a 14 karat nib. So we could go and try it out over there on our Claire Fontaine paper. And it's come along with me here. All right, so we'll take a look at this here. Do a little quick uh, brow fox, I suppose. Turn on the edge here so I can get my uh, bearing straight. See if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, this nib is just. I mean, Sailor nibs. If you've had any experience with them, are just fantastic writers in general. They have a little bit of uh, feedback to the feeling of it, so it's not like buttery, absolutely buttery smooth. But um, just the flow and the coverage that you get with the ink is just outstanding on these and. Uh, and with the music nib, you see the, the difference in line variation there. You get some really, uh, some really beautiful thick lines when you just apply even pressure to the tines and just drag that nib across the paper. And then if you just go quick, you know, you want to get a nice little thin line. You could go uh, horizontally back and forth here, and it just draws an amazing, you know, it's a stark difference between uh, both of those lines there. Uh, so, I mean, this is great for, uh, I, I tend to like to use music nibs or stub nibs, even for just everyday writing, but uh, if you're doing calligraphy uh, or just are an appreciator of uh, a beautiful line variation without having to go for like a flex nib or a, um, uh, you know, or like a cursive italic or anything like a music nib or an italic nib, you know, a stub nib is, is really a nice way to go. And a uh, neat little trick here I'll show you is that you could actually write with this upside down too and it gives it gives a very a much finer version of what you would uh, it's a much finer end dryer version of what you would do uh, in the right side version but it doesn't it's not very scratchy I mean you do feel more uh, of the feedback doing that this way, but it's not like it's not like you know It's not like an obvious scratchiness like it's just it's just drier It just has a bit more of a of a of a toothy feel to it, but um, You know for what it's worth you could do like some marginal notes turn the, the nib upside down You know make a small little note while doing your normal writing uh, with the nib right side up So it's just Try this out here. And take a look at that ink too. That's just such a nice blue black. Uh, you know, especially throwing a lot of it on the paper here. You get that you get that shading and just a richness in color just enough hinting of that blue you know without it being too 
you know, too bright of a blue. It's just, it's, it's just right on the money for a blue black. Now, if we could, if we want to, this is going to be cool. If you want to try this out, I like using a uh, an ala clip here. It's a nice investment for if you really love like pens and uh, particularly nibs. Uh, if you want to take really up close pictures of your of your pen nibs with uh, uh, you know without having to invest in a DSLR, these ala clips are fantastic for that reason. So I'm going to switch to that. So it's going to look really blurry at first, but then we're going to get down and check out our handwriting here and we could look at it super up close so you could see like every little detail of like how the the ink feeds onto the paper there and how it just how it had, had catches onto the fibers and the differences in the uh and the color from the strokes and everything So you can get a really good sense of like how this ink behaves. This is Claire Fontaine paper again. It's uh, it's one of the best to use with fountain pen inks, of course. And it just it like this is a really great combination. All right, so we could also take a look at the nib. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at this Sailor Music nib. And you can even see like a little you know piece of hair fiber that got stuck or paper fiber that got stuck on there so this is just you know this is a rhodium uh plated 14 karat gold nib in the music uh nib grind here so you have a a flat bottom uh squared off sides that are rounded uh it's so a cursive italic you know, would have you with uh, with very rigid sides, but this has got a you know rounded side to give a little bit more comfort. Uh, you know, so it doesn't have as much scratchiness to the uh, to the nib. Uh, All right, so that is the 1911 there. So we'll put this aside, and we will take a look at a brand new pen from Platinum, the Platinum Nice Lilas. We'll take a look here. So this is a brand new limited edition uh, 3776 uh, century pen from Platinum from Japan. And uh, they had come out with several different limited editions before, uh, including, um, just trying to jog my memory, there was, the, uh, there was a few other uh, colors that were part of this line. And uh, this one's a limited edition that is made in a beautiful pastel sort of pink color. Not, not quite like a magenta pink, but it's a very calming, like carnation pink, I would say. I would definitely be proud as a, a I, I would consider this pen myself. I'm more of a blue guy, but you know, I, you know, I would even think about this pen. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just a very, this is a very pretty pen just, it, and it's, it, it's just like with the gold trim, it just looks very classy. Um, you know, it's got that, it, it doesn't quite have as, as the type of finish that you would think it does. Like it doesn't have like a polished finish. Like as I'm touching it right now, I'm feeling like a, um, you know, sort of like a matted uh, finish. And I think that has to do with the sandblasted uh, effect uh, that they created here with the, the striations in the, in the material. And it kind of has like a semi-translucency to it where you could see between uh, the individual slats here and it's clearer, but then like there's an, op uh, there's an opacity to uh, the bigger panels that are here. And you see it's a screw off cap here. It's got the 14 karat broad nib. And this also fills by cartridge or converter which we don't have anything in it right now, but uh, you know, I'm willing to oblige if somebody wants me to ink this up and uh, write with it. 
uh, instead of just talking about it and playing with it in my hands here, I could actually, uh, you know, test it out for you. Um, this is a, uh, it, it's just, it's just a really just an awesome pen. I, I just really like this, uh, you know, this finish that they had put on it. And uh, I know we had gotten a few in uh, about like a week or so ago, and I don't really expect them to last uh, very long here. So um, let me just uh, let me just grab here. I could grab one of the converters, grab a converter here, and we could test it on out. And of course, of when you get your uh, your platinum pen, you have all of your uh, user manuals and warranty cards and whatnot. Okay, so let's get this guy loaded up here. It's a plug-in converter, so I'll stick that in there. Nice, secure fit. So we could go with, you know, I'd go with maybe uh, some Pelican 4001, the Brilliant Green. I think that'll look nice. I'm just getting the air out of the feed there. I got some ink up in there now. All right. Let's get my uh, my little uh, rag handy. Clean off the excess ink. So just gotta zoom up here. I'm gonna do like a little uh, quick brown fox uh, writing sample here. And this, this pen just writes instantly, just fabulously right out of the box. It's a it's a, labeled a broad nib, but I could just tell you from experience, I mean, like Japanese broads are more like European fine, I'm mean, sorry, not European fine, European medium nibs. So if, if you're looking for like a really broad, you know, wet writing experience, uh, this, is, this is going to be as best as you could get. Uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the Japanese nibs, uh, it's in contrast to the Sailor. I don't really feel any sort of uh, tooth to the nib, uh, whereas like with the Sailor nib, you would feel uh, a little bit of feedback as you write. This this platinum nib, it just writes like it's on glass, and you could just tell with it with how wet that ink looks on the paper that this is a you know this is a really good combination right here. There's um, there's not any flexibility, so it's a really it's a rigid you know 14 karat nib. There's no there's no softness or uh, pliability in that metal, but it just it just feels very smooth. It's very pleasurable to write with, and on the Claire Fontaine paper, I mean you really can't beat how just how responsive that this nib is. So we could even take a look because I'm very fond of doing this sort of thing. We'll put our all clip lens back on and we will take a look at the nib way up close. Mm. 
There's a 14 karat broad 585, which is 58.5% uh, pure gold. We'll look at the tipping material at the top here. Now I'll just take a quick look at the uh, ink we did on the page here. Let's go take a look over here. So that is the Platinum Nice Lilas. Gorgeous looking pen. I mean, definitely. If you if you are even remotely interested about this pen, I know everybody is selling them right now, and I've seen them promoted in lots of different venues, including ours. So I don't doubt that this is not this is going to be one of those pens that you don't act quickly. It will be one of those limited editions that will go and then. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be uh, eBay uh, to try and find somebody who may want to let one loose uh, that's used possibly. So, um, you know, just it uh, just to also show like it it posts posts very well. Has a good posted size. Uh, onward to uh, checking out uh, our weekly dip. Which I'll just turn the page here. Right, you know what? I'll just put this off to the side here. And uh, I'll, I'll leave this here for right now just because I wanted to talk about this, but I might talk about this last. Uh, but the weekly dip right now, we just, we're actually going to be sending out an email in about a, an hour or so. Is Are these uh, Cross Masquerade and Botanica pens? They are uh, made by Cross, AT Cross Company based out of um, based out of Rhode Island uh, but these pens are made uh, overseas in China uh, they're gorgeous gorgeous pens kind of going along the same lines as the uh, you know as, as the the platinum pen there it's a beautiful you know pen that you would typically consider to be a woman's pen but hey you know it's it's just a nice pen overall so uh, you know it's just the gorgeous designs that they put on these uh, they have the 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 two that are the editions that are older, uh, possibly harder to get, are these Masquerade models. Uh, so the, the Masquerade has a, has kind of a, uh, it's, it's kind of a more theatrical sort of theme, uh, where it's, uh, it's more of meant to be like as part of the, you know, Masquerade sort of theme. Uh, you know, it's, it still has like a floral a look to it, has a, it's like a silver veining that goes through the material as well so you could actually feel the uh, the ridges that are caused by that uh, by that process there that they I guess engraved into it and then filled it in silver uh, and then the rest of the coloration on there is all sublimated on there uh, using a I guess like a screen printing or sort of uh, ink printing process on the on the material it is a uh, brass lined uh, pen so if you look inside there, it'll be a, it'll be an all metal type pen, so it's not plastic. It uses the uh, Cross standard ballpoint refill, which is fairly easy to get. You can get those at uh, Staples, you know, Office Max, any sort of uh, you know office supply type store. I think I just un actually accidentally unscrewed that a little bit, and uh, very easy twist action mechanism. Fits nicely in the hand. It's a little bit on the slimmer side, uh, but I know some people like their pens on the slimmer side. This is a, this is made after the Century Two model, which is uh, which is actually thicker than the classic Century model, uh, but it still is a bit on the thinner side. It's about like I think three eighths of an inch thick. Uh, has chrome hardware clip on here, and uh, this one is the Peacock Green, and this one is the. Uh, name is escaping me right now at the moment. Uh, it's, it was, I think, the Scarlet Red, I believe it was. Um, but don't hold me to that. So we have also the Botanica, of which we have uh, these three styles here. 
So this is the Botanica. It's it's a, a later version of the Masquerade that was updated for a more floral uh, and also kind of like a henna infused uh, design. So you can see this, uh, this, there's just a lot, of, a lot of the same sort of motif in here where you have like a gold uh, impressions that are filled in that, that appeal to be like metallic in nature. And then there's also a colorful uh, printed barrel as well. And then these also have like a frosted uh, band um, that you can actually feel. It has like a very, a, a very sort of textured feel to it. And this one's here. Uh, this is, I think, the Hummingbird Red. And this has the chrome uh, cap band, chrome trim. And, uh, and it also has like the red uh, accents on here. Also, you have this is the, I believe this is uh, Primrose. I think it's Primrose Black or Black Primrose. Uh, nice like you know sort of monotone look to it although it's got a little bit of like a, a purplish you know sort of tone to the colorful areas that are in here so it's not quite black but it's got enough black in it that it could be like a black um, and also too is so these are just the pens themselves there's also a skew that we have that's on special that is also a, um, a gift set so this is the gold magnolia that also comes with cards and envelopes that are matching in the same uh, design. So this is the, uh, the gold magnolia finish. So it still has like a little bit, you can see like greens, you know, you have some greens in here, but there's a lot of gold, uh, oranges, and then you have of course the gold clip and the gold band, and, uh, and then also the uh, cards and envelopes that come with it too, which is a nice little value. The uh, cards have the illustration on the front here and then open up and they're blank on the inside so you can write whatever you like. All right. So I'll put that away here. So I see we have a few people online now. We're actually watching it. I appreciate it. Thumbs up to you. Uh, Band-Aid thumbs up to you. Uh, oh, and also too, we could we could talk about the Leuchtturm journal quickly too. So uh, this is my own, uh, this is the Leuchtturm journal that I had used. Uh, it's a bullet journal edition, as you can see by the impression that's there. So this is, so this is the one that I had used in our YouTube video that we had done uh, back at the beginning of this year. And, uh, and of course I've been able to use it since then. So it's got some stuff filled into it, you know? Yeah, so um, one, of the, one of the things I wanted to talk about was the paper quality. So uh, paper quality for fountain pens in particular is pretty good. Uh, it's not the best, but it is good. And as you can see by just me flipping it back and forth here, you do see like a bit of a show through and you see up here, it's kind of bled through the page just a bit, um, but I am, throwing a lot of ink on here, especially towards this part here. So if you were to, let's say, go with, uh, you know, this is a fine point, you know, you won't even see this on the other side of the page. Like, it's just, it's hardly noticeable. Uh, the paper's got a bit of a tooth to it. So if you like paper that is ultra slick and smooth, like a, uh, like a Claire Fontaine that I was using up over there, um, this isn't going, this is going to be a different experience. It's going to give a bit more of a toothy, uh, sort of experience to um, to writing on it with fountain pens, uh, you know, ball points and roller balls and whatnot, uh, felt tip markers. Uh, that's it's not going to be an issue. Um, just to kind of go over, what, I guess what we had just talked about. You know, we have uh, a sailor pen, a platinum pen, and we have some cross pens here. Uh, we talked about ink. Uh, we talked about um, Japanese nibs. We talked about uh, music nibs. Uh, writing in a Lloyd's term bullet journal, so you know anything goes. I mean, if you guys want a show where I'm just talking about pens and you just sit back and watch it, I'm fine with it. You could do that. I don't mind. I'll talk to myself about pens as long as I need to. So I do it anyway, recreationally. Just kidding. Um, so uh, you know, unless that's it, I, I suppose I'll just close the show off and and saying uh, you know thank you for watching. Hope to see you and talk to you 
uh, down the road and we'll be doing this next week. I have a special, special item that I would love to share next week and I'm really looking forward to showing it off with you guys and, uh, and talking about it. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any suggestions, want to tell me what it is that I should be doing here, um, you know, feel free to please email me at tom at goldspot.com or uh, leave a comment on the YouTube video that will be pending uh, later this week. So um, thanks guys and have a great day.